Databricks Asset Bundles. Simplifying CI CD on the Databricks platform with DABs. Ever heard of infrastructure as code, pipelines as code? Today, that's what we're going to learn about. Today, we're going to talk about Databricks Asset Bundles, otherwise known as DABs, and how they're a CI CD tool for the Databricks platform and how you can use them to control the chaos of deploying assets to Databricks. Let's dive into today's topic. What are DABs? DABs are a bundle of YAML files that specify artifacts, resources, and configurations for a Databricks project. You use a Databricks CLI to validate, deploy, and run these bundles of YAML files. The thing to note about running DABs on Databricks is that you need to install the Databricks CLI. Basically, this is how you interact create and deploy Databricks asset bundles using Databricks CLI. So you have to install it on your machine and probably in the future on a GitHub runner or something like that so the commands can be run. It's probably worth noting that Databricks provides templates for the CLI that make it easier to run a project. The best way to learn about Databricks asset bundles is to just actually use them. Let's go through the process of setting up a new DAB project that has some resources. And I think it'll make sense once you see the commands and what the files are created and what we put in the files. I think it'll bring everything together. So if you've installed the Databricks CLI, now you should be able to run commands. The first thing we're going to run, as you can see here, is Databricks bundle init. And this basically makes a new DAB project. Of course, they have templates. Like I mentioned before, you can see we can just make the default Python template. Once you run this command, it's going to ask you a couple projects, including a name. Do you want to use serverless or something else? And as you can see here, there's an error because I hadn't previously authenticated my Databricks CLI. Once you get the Databricks CLI set up, you'll go ahead and need to authenticate with a PAT token or some other way to basically authenticate that CLI before you can continue running commands. As you can see here, after authentication, the command actually works and asks me a few questions and it goes ahead and it makes a new project in the directory I'm in. Of course, if we do a list directory where I'm at, you can see there's a bunch of files now created, a databricks.yaml, some fixtures, resources, scratch, an SRC folder, some tests. This makes more sense. What we have here is a project structure for Databricks resources. Let's take a minute to quickly go over the project structure again. Let's look at the files at a high level, what they do, and then we'll dig into each file type. The databricks.yaml file is the main config and orchestration. This is the beating heart of a Databricks asset bundle. Of course, you have a readme, you have fixtures where you could place sample and test data. You also have a resources folder that could have things like job definitions, etc. And of course, you have a SRC or source folder. This is where you would put your Python libraries or other code libraries that you have written that you want to run inside these Databricks asset bundles slash your Databricks jobs, etc. Let's dive into the main databricks.yaml file. For a Databricks asset bundle, this is the main configuration file. This is where you could point to different workspaces, maybe dev and prod environments. You can include other artists, facts, and resources in the rest of the project. This is the heart. Here's an example of a simple databricks.yaml from the init command we ran before. As you can see, you could target different environments like dev and prod. Let's jump into the meat and potatoes of an actual Databricks asset bundle by not looking at just the config, but let's actually set up a Databricks job with resources. And we'll look at that in my GitHub repo that you can follow along with. And I think it'll become clear how you could actually define a Databricks job and assets that could run inside this configuration that we've seen. Let's go over inside my GitHub repo. We're gonna go ahead and click on resources here. You can see this. We can click on our DAG example. This is basically an example job. And you can see the job defined here. This is what we're calling it. It's a sample data set. You can see the job defined. You can add triggers inside the YAML file. We can have tasks for the job. We can actually reference in the resources section that Python script that we wanna actually run. So if we go back over here, click on SRC, go to our DAG example, go back to the main file. You can scroll through here, and this is basically the code that this YAML defined Databricks asset bundle will actually run in production when we deploy it. Pretty simple. There's nothing really too surprising or earth shattering to what we just looked at. It's just Databricks jobs that run every day defined in a YAML file that points to a source code containing our pipelines. 
Again, this doesn't seem to be a big reason why people would want to use Databricks asset bundles or dabs. I think at a high level, what you get from dabs is you are locked into how you define pipelines and jobs. So therefore you get consistency across projects and pipelines. Also, I think the CICD gets easier as we can look at in a little bit with GitHub Actions. It just makes them easy to deploy, consistent, and the definitions is gonna be the same across everything because everything is defined in YAML the same way. Here's a really simple example of a GitHub workflow action setup where we're installing the Databricks CLA, as you can see here, and then we're going ahead, we're validating a bundle, we're deploying a bundle, we can even run the bundle once it hits main. You can do all sorts of things. You could have different actions set up for open a PR, for deploying a PR once it hits main, it could push out and deploy these bundles and validate them, etc. You can see how powerful this is when the Databricks CLI is combined with Databricks asset bundles and dabs all together. It's kind of the complete picture, the complete project setup, not only for defining projects, for actually deploying them as well. So what did we learn today? Today we learned that Databricks asset bundles are sets of YAML files that we can use to define projects, resources, everything that you would want to do on Databricks, jobs, whatever. We can validate, deploy, run, combine them with GitHub Actions. And this is all done with the Databricks CLI. That's what you have to use if you're going to use DAB bundles. And they come with a bunch of templates. It's really easy to set up. We saw that it's pretty straightforward as long as you're okay with writing YAML. The project structure we looked at, pretty straightforward. Databricks YAML, main config, all sorts of fixtures if you want to set up tests, the resources where we can actually define the code and our pipelines that we want to run. What it comes down to is, is it worth it? I think it's worth it if you want a consistent overall experience to define your Databricks assets and pipelines, if you want consistency over time, easy deployability, have a big team, then Databricks asset bundles are definitely for you. If you enjoyed this video at all, please help me out by commenting, liking, subscribing, sharing. It makes a big difference for me. I appreciate it.